Hello everybody. Okay. <clears throat> this is um the story of Black Elk's vision. Okay. Black Elk was a young boy when he had this vision. He's a Native American. And um his uh his tribe was very renowned for having um for telling for, uh for telling visions and uh prophecies coming true and um they're a very spiritual tribe. And uh the writer of this book is Ed McCaw, the Eagle Man McCaw. This is a uh, Mother Earth Spirituality. Native American paths to healing ourselves and our world. Okay. But Specifically, Black Elk's vision is quite important to the Flat Earth. It's exciting towards the, 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 the Flat Earth the realization and specifically the Tree of Life. Um, we all are now understanding that uh, the Flat Earth could potentially have a greater, far greater history than we were, have, we have been led to believe, okay? A far more spiritual and um, beautiful and just with the, the 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 video if you have not seen it yet flat earth has no trees kind of reveals that there's a possibility that our, much of our large mountains much as our large uh, huge landscapes like that the, the big flat topped mountains or even some of the the chipped mountains you look at them and they look they resemble specifically looks like tree, tree stumps, like, <laughs> like just huge massive old tree stumps. And then you look at all the trees we have today and you have to question why is though only all the trees throughout almost everywhere in the world other than a few specific locations that you could research, it's like a handful, have like only a hundred years on them or only less than that, like maybe 80, like there maybe there's some that are 500 years if you go to old growth areas up north in Algonquin in Canada where I'm from, and you can get some older growth trees. But why only? What what happened to all the the growth on our planet? Why why are they only this age? Um, <laughs> like you should really question why we're in the state of the planet. It's, like it's not just global warming. It's not just your your. Uh, perspective reality that they've created for you to fear for, on you really need to question what our reality consists of now that we understand that they uh, have been lying to us just with perspective or perceptions of what it consists of to keep us disempowered okay so getting to it we're at the three minute mark okay so black elk saw this is the beginning of his vision and you're gonna have to use your internal mind's eye a little bit of create creativeness to understand this, but I'll, I'll I'll guide you along. Black Elk saw two men descending with flaming spears. They took him on a cloud to a great plain. There, a bay horse greeted him, accompanying by prancing horses of different colors. Okay, black, white, red, and yellow. Later, these colors would then represent four directions. Okay, so north, south east, west. This is your black, white, red, and yellow for the Native Americans. Um, and you'll see this a lot in their, their artwork if you if you just go to a multicultural fest or something, you'll see it. That's their their north, south, east, west. And now you look at the North Pole, okay? The the maps that we all have been revealing there. I think it's the Mercator. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, with the four rivers, okay? The four mountains, okay? Continuing, leaving the horses, Black Elk went into a rainbow-covered lodge, okay? My perception is a Mount Maru, okay? The, the lodge of the six grandfathers, the power of the four quarters and four directions of the universe and the Mother Earth and Father Sky, okay? Polarity, the four directions, the four quarters of the whole experience, the whole universe, okay? The first grandfather, the power of the West, gave Black Elk a cup of water, the power to sustain life. From the Black West, thunder beings released the life-giving rains. Then the grandfather handed him a bow and told him he would be also have the power to destroy. 
The second grandfather, the power of the north, gave him a white wing and a sacred herb of sage. The wing, like the northern snow, exemplified the power of cleansing, endurance, and courage. The herb provided truth and honesty, strong healing sus sustenances for our bodies, Mother Earth, and, and leadership. <laughs> he, he writes here in World Governments. There's a lot of different tiny little details I don't... He's, he's also an advocate for, um, pardon me, global warming. But the third grandfather, the power of the Red Dawn, the rising in the east, okay, the sun, gave Black Elk the sacred pipe, the power of peace. The daybreak star appeared, and he was told he would have the power to awaken others. Powerful knowledge would come to this land, and peace would come through knowledge and wisdom. The fourth grandfather, the power of the south, gave him a bright red stick sprouting, sprouting leaves. The grandfather said that the tree would grow in the center of the nation. Okay, A tree would grow in the center of a nation. Let me repeat that. A yellow hoop appeared, symbolizing in its color growth and physical healing. In its circle, the unity of all things. Okay? This is our destiny. This is our future. This is happening now. The growth, the regrowth of this tree. Because when Black Elk had this vision, remember, this is a while ago. This is, an, uh, this is a descendant of Ed Makar, I believe. Okay. The fifth grandfather, the spirit of the sky, became an eagle. He spoke, saying that all things of the sky, the winged, the winds, and the stars, would be as relatives and would come to Black Elk and help him. The sixth grandfather was really Mother Earth, the Earth Spirit. The Earth Spirit took Black Elk outside of the lodge and told him the Earth power would be with him. In time, the two leggeds would desperately need Mother Earth's help. Black Elk was instructed to set the red stick in the center of the yellow hoop. There, the tree was to grow, and around it, people would gather. In time, the tree would bloom. Black Elk saw the earth becoming sick. The animals, the winged ones, and the four legged ones grew frightened. All things became gaunt and poor. The airs and the waters dirtied and smelled foul. Below Black Elk saw a blue man living in an empowered sickness. The powers of the four directions, pardon me, represented by four horses, charged the blue man, but were beaten back. The grandfathers called upon Black Elk. His bow changed into a spear, and he swooped down on the blue man, killing him. When the blue man fell, all life came back upon the earth. All things became fresh and healthy again. Then Black Elk took the bright red stick and cast it into the center of the earth. The stick became a Sundance tree, a Wagashan, a cottonwood tree. A peace pipe descended to the tree's base, spreading deep peace, and the people sang with delight. The daybreak star rose and Black Elk was told that the star would be as a relative to the people. Those who saw it would see much more, because the star represented wisdom. Black Elk was then shown his people over a great span of time, beginning with the time his people all walked in a sacred manner, following the good red road, camping in a sacred circle. A holy tree stood out sharply within the encampment center. Behold a good nation walking in a sacred manner in a good land. The people sang. In time, however, the people broke into little groups and denominations, each group following a different path, and, a la and all around them was fighting and war. The sacred tree withered again. Black Elk saw miserable, starving faces, and people were sick and dying. A red man appeared among the people. His transformation into a buffalo indicated a time of plenty. A sacred herb became four flowers, <clears throat> four blossoms on a single stem. 
The four-rayed herb, red, yellow, black, and white, became the flowering tree once again. Black El Kurdistan, a good nation I will make live. This nation above has said, they have given me the power to make over. Then Black Elk saw that the sacred hoop of his people was only one of many hoops, all joined together to make one great circle, okay, the tree of life. The great hoops of all people, in the center of the great hoop, stood a powerful, shelting, flowering tree. So maybe our tree of life, and the, the ice little things, okay, in our little depictions that we have in our brains, is just another tree of life of many other trees of life, okay? <clears throat> All, okay. Then Black Elk saw that the sacred hoop of his people was only one of great, one of many hoops, all joined together to make one great circle, the great hoop of all peoples. In the center of the great hoop stood a powerful, sheltering, flowering tree, and under it gathered children of all nations. At the end of Black Elk's visions, uh, uh, at the end of Black Elk's vision, two sp spirit men gave him the day-breaking star, herb of understanding. He dropped the herb down the world below, and it flowered, spreading its power out into the whole world. Okay, the herb of understanding. <clears throat> In time, he was promised his people would be free, and he would help spread the pa this power of peace and understanding. Black Elk to live to be an old man. In his lifetime, he did witness the free spirits of the mystic warriors of the plains become a tethered eagle in a wish off shoes or white man's zoo. Pardon me, this is pretty interesting. This is um, Black Elk his, as he continued to his life. Um, he and his people became captives of the dark reservation road. Old warriors waited in remote remoteness amid poverty and despair for the promise of yesterday before his passings the old man ascended harney peak thunder being mountain in the black hills to lament aloud to wonkum tonka the great spirit of all powers he believed his once powerful vision had failed for there was no sun dance tree no greening leaves and the flowering herb had failed to bloom he pleaded, crying piteously for one last bud, a springing leaf, a glowing ember, to signify the return of the Indian spirit, somehow, in some way. Okay, so, <laughs> Edna Farr writes, comments on Black Elk's vision, but this will be my comments on Black Elk's vision, continuing that story. So pardon me for the, the slowness that I read this. I hope you have your patience with me. But I hope you could really understand to our new perspective what Black Elk's vision could truly be trying to prophesize, okay? If you're trying to prophesize the returning of these great trees, okay? If these trees have been cut down for such a long time where it's only over time until ooh, it takes life takes its course, it's... Clearly, it would take such a long, thousands and thousands and thousands to, to construct these silicone trees. But if you think about it, think about Santa Claus, okay? Think, think about who lives at the North Pole, okay? Think about what they do they say about Santa Claus. What is also goes along with the North Pole, not just its existence, okay? The power of its belief, the power of the belief of Santa Claus gives him the ability to fly, okay? The power of his, our belief in him, the children, the created children, okay? Your ch man, they've, the children within us that we need to return to to become the greatest versions of ourselves. we need to believe in the spirit, in the love, in the joy, in the creative yin, the creative energy of truth and energy and the creative within us and the present moment experience to believe in the tree of life, to believe in the mission of getting to the North Pole, okay? This is how we are going to fly there. It's the same thing with Santa Claus. The tree of life is re-sprouting, okay? If you go look up at all the, go look at Devin Magin, Devin Maggi, pardon me, 
Devin Maggi on YouTube. He has the best uh, channel right now covering the biggest truth of the tree of life in the north pole of the center of the flat earth plane. This is going to allow us to travel there as more we, just by communicating. That's simply, this is all we have to do. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And people will get the word out. And we will, <laughs> once there's enough people who are onto the flat earth theory, once there's enough people who are onto the North Pole exit, um, exodus expedition, we will easily be able to go there in 2019. Yes, there's going to be retaliation. There's even talk about in the, in holy books, okay? Talks about, a, a holy war going on in the North Pole that will spark, okay, the returning, okay, the heaven on earth, the um, judgment day, okay, and not to make you a fearful perspective of the religious bias confinements, they want to make a very external perception of something that's very internal, okay, and if you can't di de decipher this code, then you're going to lose the spirituality within the religious perception. And I guarantee you that's most of what religion has done to all of us. Externalized our internal power towards a, a false, fearful perception of empowerment, uh, disempowerment. The God is within you. The, the Christ consciousness is you to create within the present moment through your love. Okay, That's all a test. This whole experience is a test. Who created it? Maybe we're all part of who created it. Maybe we're the creator experiencing creation, okay? So, here we are, getting up to 17 minutes. The tree of life is regrowing. We're all going to the center of the North Pole. The the flat earth plane, the center of the... Okay, where all of our compasses point. The compass, the Mount Maru. You can um <laughs> just go look up different theories about this. I'm only here to produce... More information, perceptional awareness, expand your perceptional awareness. I'm just here to communicate with you comfortably, confidently, to grow upon this community of who we are, okay? No egotistical consciousness, no fear, that's all it is, okay? We can address it that way, and it'll make you way more comfortable with living, okay? Living in love. So, there you have it. Have it what you will, make it what you will. Have a great day. I love you guys.